Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I think it's important for me as the new chief of the Little Rock Police Department to share with the citizens uh, my vision, uh, the vision that I have for the department and for the community. I think it's also important for me to talk about some important topics that uh, we've been uh, asked about. And so uh, I think I want, well, not think, but I, I know it's important for the citizens to hear that from me. And so I want to talk about some things that are upcoming. There's been some talk about a citizens review board. Let me assure the citizens of the city that in the very near future, myself and Mayor Scott, Mayor Scott will be talking to the Department of Justice regarding citizen review and citizen advisory, a citizen advisory committee. But it's, an, it's important for the community to understand that we want to develop the best review policy or advisory policy for the city of Little Rock. Uh, we do not want to use a canned uh, program. We want to make, once again, we want to make sure we have the best uh, board or committee for the city of Little Rock. Another thing that we want to talk about, I talked about transparency during my, uh, during the process, I talked about transparency. And one of the things that we are looking at uh, we have uh, submitted an RFP for body-worn cameras. We're very, very excited about this. Uh, as you know, that takes time. It's nothing that we can do over overnight. Uh, it's very important for us to establish a policy first and also to establish a process in which our officers can test whatever body camera we decide to, to go with. Um, we'll soon be receiving bids on, that body cam on the body cameras. The other thing that's important to the citizens is uh, the topic of no-knock warrants. I want to ensure the citizens of the, of the community that as the new police chief, it's my responsibility to review all policies and procedures here in our, in our department. Uh, I'm, I'm reviewing those. I'm re making sure that I speak with staff about policies. Uh, that's important to, to me. Uh, that's what makes uh, your department uh, credible. So we are looking at that. Uh, that's, a, that's a topic and many other topics. Also, I'd like to express my sympathy and condolences to the Blackshire family. I also would like to extend my uh, uh, condolences or my uh, heartfelt, uh, my heart goes out to Officer Starks and his family. Uh, when you have an event of this nature, uh, it's, it's tragic on both sides. Uh, we understand uh, that the family is, is hurting. We totally understand that. Uh, and keep in mind that Officer Stark's family is also, is also hurting. Not trying to compare the two. By no means will I ever do that. But I think that uh, we have to, we have to uh, uh, think about both families. Uh, I, will, I will continue to say, talk about transparency. Uh, here at the Little Rock Police Department, we understand what's in the importance of allowing our community um, to know that we have nothing to hide. I do want to talk about the uh, investigation that's ongoing uh, regarding the, the Blackshire incident. Uh, what you have to understand is that there are two investigations going on and they run concurrently. There's an administrative investigation that's conducted by our Internal Affairs Department and there's a criminal investigation that's being conducted by the, uh, uh, the uh, district attorney's office, prosecuting attorney's office. We have no control over the length of the investigation of the, the criminal investigation. Uh, the, both are ongoing. I spoke with the dis, uh, prosecuting attorney yesterday, and he assured me that the, the case is being reviewed. I can assure the citizens of Little Rock that the internal investigation is also being, uh, continue to be reviewed. So I wanted to make that clear that there's two separate investigations going. A lot of times, uh, citizens don't understand the difference. There's an administrative process and there's a criminal process. So they do run concurrently. And so the criminal process, the uh, administrative process focuses on uh, policy, uh, policy, possible policy violations, whether or not policy was violated, whether or not standard operating procedures were violated. So I just wanted to clarify that. It is frustrating. 
uh, the, the length of the investigations are frustrating, but, but I would ask the citizens to be patient because we want to be consistent. Uh, there's a consistent process that we follow, and there's a consistent process that the uh, prosecuting attorney follows. We want to make sure that everyone uh, receives due process. So it is a very frustrating process. I totally understand that. Uh, but it's not going to be a process that's going to be uh, handled overnight. I can assure you when the final outcome, you will understand why these type of processes take uh, uh, so long. So I just want the citizens to be patient with us. The other thing is that we really respect the rights of our citizens to, to, uh, uh, to protest, to exercise their First Amendment right. We, we, we respect that as, as Little Rock Police Department. That's very important that we do not interfere with indi individuals' rights. However, you know, and, and, and add on to that, we do respect, uh, we understand there's going to be civil disobedience. However, uh, we don't want civil unrest. Uh, we want all First Amendment protesters to be, all First Amendment protests to be peaceful. That's the main thing that I want to emphasize here. We want any protest, all protests, all civil uh, expre expression, all um, expressions of the First Amendment, we want them to be civil. But we understand there's going to be some civil disobedience. We understand that. But however, uh, we want it to be um, we want it to be peaceful. That's important, peace, because we don't want anyone to uh, we don't want to, we don't want to see property damage, we don't want to see anybody injured, and I think that uh, the citizens as that I spoke with uh, directly uh, earlier this week, uh, there's no indication that they had planned any civil disobedience or if they had planned anything other than a peaceful protest, and we would ask them to continue to uh, exercise their First Amendment rights uh, in a civil way. But I think that the main thing is that I want the citizens to know everything that I said we were going to do uh, here in the Little Rock Police Department. We are going to fulfill those promises. We are going to be transparent. We are going to be respectful. We are going to continue to emphasize 21st century policing. That's important. Transparency, transparency, transparency. That's the key to a successful relationship between the community and our police department. And so I want to be held accountable. That's important. Um, I told everyone, like I said during the process, everything that I said, I truly believe that we will be the safest city in Arkansas, and I truly believe that we are on the way to be one of the safest cities in the nation. So I appreciate each and every one of you being here today, and I will take questions. Yes, ma'am. Is there any necessity for the internal investigation to go on longer than the criminal one? Can the IA department make a decision before the criminal, uh, the prosecutor returns his decision? So, you know, industry standards are, and based on our colleague, we have a, it's all about due process. So they're both separate. So the main thing we want to do is make sure we do a thorough investigation. Uh, so it, it's not that it's, could we do it this way? I'm probably sure if we cut corners, but we, we're not going to cut corners. We're going to make we're going to make sure any employee that's involved in a uh, internal investigation is going to receive due process. We don't want to cut corners. Uh, everyone, no matter what uh, the citizens uh, might think, uh, we're not we can't cut corners because that's a part of integrity and credibility. Chief, has the prosecutor <clears throat> given you any kind of I guess direction to how long it will take for them to review that that criminal case and when they'll decide if charges are going to be filed. He has not given me a timeline, but what he has told me is that the, um, the investigation is being um, the investigation is ongoing and they are still reviewing uh, the case packet. Yes, ma'am. Where do you draw the line between civil disobedience and civil unrest? You know, we try to give everybody an opportunity to correct their actions. And I think when it gets to the point of destruction of, of property and the destruct and also the, uh, the the possibility that someone would be injured, including citizens and officers, uh, I think that that draws the line. And I think that uh, you would find over the throughout the country uh, there are departments that they allow citizens to express, and they allow there there may be some civil disobedience. 
then you try to give the individuals the opportunity to correct that themselves. But at some point, uh, we we have to take some form of action. Yes, um, looking at reviewing policies and investigating complaints, how will policy review be conducted and how will you investigate complaints from the department? Well, I think, uh, I think the process that we have, uh, I've reviewed that. I'm, I'm comfortable with the process we have as far as in viewing, reviewing uh, internal investigations. Uh, policy is something that, that I'm reviewing every day. Uh, in order for me to be an effective chief, I have to know the policies. Uh, I have to stand up in front of the citizens and when they ask a question, I want to make sure that I discuss the proper policy because if I don't, that, that goes my credibility. So it's an ongoing process. I've been reading ever since uh, the day after uh, the mayor announced me as chief, I've been reading the policy. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, very interesting so far. I see it. Keep in mind, we're CALEA accredited, so we follow industry standards. Uh, we, in order for us to be re re accredited, uh, we have to, our policy has to be uh, very tight and, 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 and easy, easy for officers to understand. And we have to make sure that we continue to follow those guidelines. And we're going to continue to be clear accredited. That is, uh, keep in mind, less than 10% of the departments in the nation are clear accredited. So we're one of those fortunate departments that are. Chief, uh, the mayor said that the FBI would be in contact over the Black Shark case. And now the attorneys for Roger Talley are saying that they've been talking with the FBI and they believe the FBI has been speaking with you. What can you tell us about those conversations with federal authorities about these two cases or other cases? Yeah, I think that's a separate, that's a separate, that, those are separate topics. Uh, I have not personally spoken with the FBI. Uh, I, I've heard that, that, uh, that there has been some inquiries by the FBI, but I have no uh, direct knowledge of that. I have not spoken. Can you, if they were, what was your reaction? I can't answer that until uh, I would be contacted because that's a federal investigation and we're conducting a state investigation. So just to clarify, Chief, I'm, you're not aware of any kind of investigation by the FBI into the LRPD? I'm not aware of it. Uh, I've been here, this is my fourth day. I have not heard that. This is the first time I've heard that. So I have not spoken to you, but you would think that would be something that you would know even four days in, hey, the FBI is investigating, because, I mean, that's a pretty big deal, right? I, I believe so. Yeah. I absolutely think I would know something about it. Can you also just speak to how you're communicating with officers ahead of possible protests this weekend? I mean, this is obviously a very important time in making sure that, um, you know, civil liberties are protected and, and protests remain peaceful. What kind of message are you giving the department ahead of these planned demonstrations? I think the main thing is emphasizing First Amendment rights. And then, like we said earlier, you know, there, we know there's going to be some civil disobedience. We, we totally understand that. Uh, we, we allow the ex expression, but I think the officers are well aware that uh, they're very well trained here. Uh, they're very aware uh, of the First Amendment, and they're very aware of what the limits that we will allow uh, and when it comes to civil disobedience. And I'll say this again, when you start destructing property, when you start putting citizens in danger, uh, we have to react. And, and I have no doubt uh, from the men and women of the Little Rock Police Department, it's going to be in a professional manner. I have no doubt. Chief, can you tell me about some of your experiences when it comes to dealing with these kind of things? You've been here four days, and I, mean, I would say you have a lot on your plate already. It's, it's, it's all the same. It's all about communicating. I thought it was very important for me the other day actually go down and speak with uh, the, the protesters and listen. Uh, a lot of times we don't have to say anything. Uh, people just want to express their concerns. That's very important. So I felt that it was important. I'm a, I'm a communicator. So a lot of times I try to go down and I try to, you know, I try to meet with uh, the individuals directly. Uh, there are times when uh, they'll ask questions and you may not have an answer, but you can listen and then you can provide a follow-up uh, answer to their questions. However, I will say, uh, I was honored to go down and speak with them. And, and I think that uh, uh, I understand their frustration. I totally understand that. I, I understand their concerns. And that's why it's important for the family and for the community to understand uh, we can't cut corners in our administrative investigation. And I don't believe that the, the, the uh, prosecuting attorney 
and speaking with him, that he feels the same way about not cutting corners. So we have to trust each other, and, and, and although they're separate investigations, we have to allow the experts of the police department to uh, review the administrative case, and the prosecuting attorney is the expert in, in criminal. So uh, we don't too much get uh, you know, into each other's business. Thank you. 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 Thank you.